So we are given a diagram. Uh, they say it's a trapezium. Uh, they said that these two lines are parallel and the inclination of AB is alpha. And it says K lies on the Y axis. Okay, so everything that they've told us here is, um, everything they've told us is in the question or on the diagram. The first question says, calculate the midpoint of EC, the midpoint of EC. So that's gonna be quite an EC question. <laughs> For those of you that caught that, nice. So this is gonna be quite a nice question. Um, if you look between E and C, we can just use the midpoint formula. So midpoint of EC, and then we can use the midpoint formula, which is not a Y, which is a X1 plus X2 over two. I'm gonna go quite quickly now. You guys understand this. And so, okay, if you guys had to go work out the midpoint, you're gonna get a zero and you are gonna get negative three over two. Done. I'm not going to waste your guys' time. So zero and negative three over two, that is the midpoint. So zero and minus three over two. Although we already have the answer written over there. Okay. Then we're going to go find the gradient of DC. So the gradient would be between these two points. So that would just use the gradient formula, which I'll quickly show you guys. Uh, the gradient of DC would just be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. You would go ahead, fill in all your values, and you should end up getting um, a half. You're going to get a half as your answer. Then the next one says, calculate the equation of AB, equation of AB in the form Y equals to MX plus C. It's quite interesting. So some of you might look at this and think, okay, how am I going to do this? How am I going to find the equation of this line if I don't have, I don't have much about that line. All I know is that I've got the coordinates of E. However, we must understand that these two lines are parallel. When two lines are parallel, they have the same gradient. And so we do have the gradient of this line technically. And we worked out the gradient of DC already. It was a half. So let's quickly say that the gradient of AB is the same as the gradient of DC. And that is because of, um, they are parallel. Okay, sorry, yeah, they're parallel. And so the gradient of AB is gonna be a half. And so we can then say that the equation of line AB would be Y equals to a half X plus C. To find C, you would just use a random point on, you would use a random point um, on the line, which could be this one over here. And so you could plug in the zero, it's minus two plus C. And so if you had to go work this out, C would be equal to one. And so Y is equal to, Y is equal to a half X plus one. That is the equation of um, AB. And here we have it over there. Doesn't look very nice over here, but I meant one over two and then X. Right, so the next question says, um, okay, so let's just quickly get rid of all this mess here. We need to now do 3.1.4, which is the size of theta. So that's this angle over here. Now, I wanna quickly talk to you guys about something. I know a lot of you are not comfortable with this, but let me just try show you. So you know that if you have a triangle and this angle is 40 and this angle is 80, then this angle on the outside will always be 120 or it will always be it'll always be the sum of the two interior angles i know a lot of you don't like that um but i'm just showing you because i'm going to use that method now what a lot of you like to do is you rather like to calculate this angle first and then you like to calculate that angle using straight line there's nothing wrong with that okay when i was a student i also did it that way okay so, and, and I said that earlier as well, but it's really true as you, as when you do this every day, you just learn all these new different ways. But as a student, I totally understand. Um, you just want to remember the easiest way for yourself and you just want to get done with the question. I know. So um, let's quickly move on. So what we're going to do now is we've got to try work out that angle. So I'm going to work in this triangle over here this little triangle over there. And we can now get rid of these red lines. Okay. The reason is, is that 
because I know the gradient of this line, that allows me to calculate this angle very easily because I want you to remember the three words, gradient, inclination angle, using tan. Gradient, inclination angle, tan. Remember those three, they go together. So if you have the gradient of the line AB, so the gradient of line AB, we already worked it out earlier as a half. Then you can work out the inclination angle by just saying tan theta. Sorry, that's an alpha angle, tan alpha. And then you have to use shift on your calculator. So I'm going to say minus one over there. And that should be, sorry, what am I doing? Shift tan of a half should give us alpha. And if you go work that out, alpha should be equal to 26,57 degrees. 26,57 seven degrees. Now, the next thing you need to realize is that this angle is 90. Why? Because it's the intersection of the X and the Y axis. And that's always 90 degrees, of course. You can do this however you like. Maybe some of you would like to first go and calculate. Um, you would like to first go calculate this little angle inside there by using sum of angles in a triangle. And then after that, you would use angles on a straight line over here. You're more than welcome to do that. That's perfectly fine. But I'm just going to do exterior angle um, of a triangle. So this is the exterior angle of a triangle. And that's always equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles. So if I draw that triangle out a little bit larger for us, we've just calculated this as 26,57. We know that this is 90. And so this angle here will be the sum of um, this one plus that one. Okay. But as I said, you can do it in other ways as well. So we can now say that angle uh, theta is going to be equal to 90 plus 26,57. And that's because of exterior angle of a triangle. And so theta would be 116.57 degrees. The next question, prove that AB is parallel to BC. Prove that AB is parallel to BC. So where are these things? Okay, there we go. So it wants us to prove that this line, um, prove that AB, okay, so BC, and AB. Now, this is not a difficult question. We know that when two um, lines are perpendicular, then the way that we can prove that is we, we're going to go calculate the gradient of AB, or which we already have as a half. Then we can calculate the gradient of BC, which we don't know. And then we're going to multiply those two numbers together and we should get minus one. If we get minus one, then we can say that the, uh, those two lines are perpendicular. Okay, so we need to quickly go calculate the gradient of, of this line over here. Now that's easy because we need to, okay, well, first we need to calculate the, 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 the coordinates of B and we can do that quite nicely. So earlier on, we calculated the equation of the line AB, right? We, cal we calculated that equation. And so we know that that equation was y equals to half x plus one. So if you want to find B, then that will just be the y-intercept. That'll just be the y-intercept. So we can just make, um, we can make x equal to zero. And you would find out that y is equal to one. So this coordinate over here is going to be zero and one. Now I'm going to go quite quickly. Now we can calculate the gradient of we can calculate the gradient of BC. And if you had to go calculate the gradient of BC using the gradient formula, you should end up getting a positive two. I mean negative two. Sorry, two. And so what we then do is we're going to go multiply the gradient of AB, multiply the gradient of BC. And so that will be negative two, or sorry, let's say a half first. And that gives us negative one. And so therefore, AB 
is perpendicular to BC because we got that magic number of minus one. They tell us that um, the points E, B, and C lie on the circumference of a circle. Determine the center of a circle. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to go draw the circle as best as possible. Hey, sometimes the circles come out so ugly. In um, I remember like as a student, it's always difficult to draw those circles. So uh, E, B, and C, E, B, and C. Okay. There we go. So the circle that these people are talking about is that one over there. It's a circle that goes through the point E, B, and C. And they said, determine the center of the circle. Now, guys, when they ask you to do this in an exam, um, many times the goal of what, well, what you need to try and do is try to find where the diameter is. And I'm going to tell you right now that this is the diameter. And I know that some of you watching this, um, well, you're all watching this because we're all sitting here together, aren't we? Um, some of you are thinking that, um, how do I know that that's the diameter? The reason I know that that is the diameter is because in a circle, okay, so if I have a circle and I have a diameter, then I know that the, the angle that the diameter is able to make is always 90 degrees. And only a diameter can do that. The diameter is the only thing that can make a 90 degree in a circle like that. In the previous question, we calculated that this was 90 degrees because the lines are perpendicular. And that, that, that 90 degrees, well, well, that then means that this line is the diameter. And once you get that, it's very easy. And guess what? Most of the time, it is going to work out like that. Okay, so look out for that in your test. So we can now find the center of the circle because if this is, if this is um, the diameter, then we could find the center of the circle by just finding the midpoint. Okay, and we already found the midpoint of line EC. I don't know why they're asking this like twice, but we already found the midpoint of EC um, over here. Remember? And we got zero and negative three over two. And so that is our answer, negative and minus three over two. Then the last question, four marks, calculate the equation of the circle. So we know that the equation of a circle is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals to r squared. Now, if this is zero and minus three over two, then a would be a would be zero, right? That's just the way that works. So a is zero because this circle has not moved right or left. And then B would just be positive three over two. Let me write that a bit neater like that, right? Because that's a circle center. And then the radius we're going to have to calculate. Now, how are we going to calculate the radius? Now, this is the tricky part. Okay. I'm just joking. Guys, it's easy. We have, um, we have so many points. We could easily find the radius. You could maybe calculate the radius by going from here to here, for example, or any, yeah, there's so many different ways you can get the radius here. So what I'm going to quickly do is I'm just going to go calculate um, from the center point here to point C. So I'm just going to use the distance formula. And so that's going to be 0 minus 2, and then minus 3 over 2 minus minus 3. And if you had to go type, whoopsie, if you had to go type all of that in on the calculator, you're going to get an answer of 5 over 2. Okay. So we can then say that the radius is 5 over 2. But remember that in the circle equation, you have to square that number. And so R squared would be 25 over 4. And so our final answer would be X squared plus Y plus 3 over 2 squared equals to 25 over 4.